The question is, describe and explain how fish maintain a flow of water over their gills. This question is asking you to describe and explain the flow of water over the gills. Now, a frequent mistake, according to the examiner's report, was students mostly gave a detailed but irrelevant explanation of the counterflow mechanism. This question is asking you about ventilation. So what happens? Well, the mouth of the fish opens and the operculum valve shuts. The floor of the mouth is then lowered. As you know, this is going to cause a decrease in pressure and water is going to enter the fish. mouth then closes, the floor is raised, causing an increase in pressure due, oh, where's it gone? due to a decrease in volume. Then the high pressure forces the water over the gills. This is a full mark question. These are the points you need for the full marks. So the question is, describe and explain how fish maintain a flow of water over their gills. Well, first of all, the mouth of the fish opens. The operculum valve shuts, the floor of the mouth is then lowered, water enters deep due to a decreased pressure, the mouth then closes, the floor is raised causing an increase in pressure due to a decreased volume, high pressure forces water over the gills. The question today, in humans, substances move out of the capillaries to form tissue fluids. Describe how this tissue fluid is returned to the circulatory system. This question is worth three marks, therefore the examiner is looking for three points. The examiner remarks says candidates obtaining a single mark often did so by referring to the role of the lymphatic system in returning tissue fluid to the circulatory system. However, a significant number of candidates wasted time by explaining the formation of tissue fluid at the arterial end of the capillary. There was some confusion by weaker candidates about the effects of protein on the water potential inside blood capillaries. Many candidates did refer to osmosis, but not always in the correct context. So what are they looking for? Well, let's begin. The hydrostatic pressure is lower in the capillary, or the blood, and is higher in the tissues, or the tissue fluid. The words... Uh, the part of the word er uh, is underlined. That means to get the mark, the first mark, you need to have the word er uh, in there, or the part of the word er uh, in there. So lower, higher, it's got to be a comparison. Water therefore returns by osmosis. The water potential is lower in the blood and higher in the tissues and therefore you have a water potential gradient. This is caused by the protein in the blood and it returns via the lymph. So let's return to the question. In humans, substances move out of the capillaries to form tissue fluid. Describe how the tissue fluid is returned to the circulatory system. Well, the hydrostatic pressure is lower in the capillary blood and it's higher in the tissue fluid. Water returns by osmosis, the water potential is lower in the blood and higher in the tissues by a water potential gradient. This is caused by the protein in the blood and it returns via the lymph. This would give you the three marks.